Hi, everybody. Jeff Yastine here, and welcome back to a new edition of Market Insight. And I'm joined this week by my friend and colleague, Ted Bauman, editor of the Bauman Letter and, of course, Alpha Stock Alert. So, Ted, welcome. Hi, Jeff. You're looking very sharp today. I'm uh, dressing up and wearing my blazer. So, uh, uh, try to look good for you here. Um, you know, I thought this week we'd talk a little bit about uh, 5G, super fast uh, internet service and also how that relates to uh, manufacturing and revolutionizing and changing things about, uh, about manufacturing, disrupting it. Uh, what's your take on that? Because you know, we're starting to see more and more 5G talked about, not just in the media, but now they're starting to market some phones on it. And uh, we're seeing more and more of the country getting hooked up to this uh, 5G internet service. Well, uh, you know, uh, Jeff, I, I, I pride myself on being a bit of a contrarian, but Unlike a lot of contrarians, um, it's usually for a good reason. And um, in my case, I'm, I'm a little bit skeptical of the consumer side of 5G, uh, at least as a short-term opportunity, simply because I'm not convinced that there's enough uh, benefit to the average com uh, consumer to pay a lot of money for a new cell phone and a new package, you know, just to download movies quickly. Uh, it's going to come. But what I see, in fact, is the immediate benefits coming in the industrial area because besides speed, one of the things that 5G does is make communication almost instantaneous. Um, you know, basically, if you're a, a surgeon and you're operating, uh, you move your virtual scalpel now, it moves in real time on the other end at the patient side. And I think that's where the big opportunity is going to come first. And I think it, um, uh, that's a really interesting play for, for those of us who want to get in on the ground floor of 5G. You know, Ted, one of the difficulties I think everybody has about 5G and, and, and what you're talking about is, is uh, examples. Like, can you, can you give us a sense of how that will, will change? You just did in, in, in there when you're talking about uh, things like doing surgery through the Internet. But like in a warehouse environment, how would you, how would you see 5G changing that? Well, uh, for example, if you have an industrial robot, for example, right now, um, the industrial robot is programmed to do one thing and do it over and over and over again. It does it very well. Um, but if you have 5G, um, you can actually send different tasks to that robot uh, and it can read what that task is, let's say from a barcode on, on the object that it's working on. And because it's instantaneous, it can relate back to the master computer and say, here's what I see in front of me. What am I supposed to do with it? And immediately it knows and it can do that thing. So a robot which used to be uh, basically limited to doing one thing over and over again has to be reprogrammed. Now it can do a, a wide variety of things because 5G allows the programming, in a sense, to happen instantaneously. You know, and, and broadly speaking, really what we're talking about is, is enhanced or super enhanced connectivity. And I'm always fascinated by how that has moved in waves around the world. And of course, we've had you know, 4G internet for our smartphones for what, a decade or so now, uh, maybe a little bit more than that. And yet in other parts around the world, like uh, I, I've been doing a lot of writing recently about Latin America and emerging markets, in many of those places, they're still just getting uh, 4G. And as where 4G is pretty much you know, 99 or 100% of the cell phone networks in this country are all 4G and now moving to 5G in places like Latin America, only about 55% or so uh, even have access to 4G, much less actually subscribing to it. Many people are still using 3G uh, services there. And so we're beginning to see a revolution in emerging markets with enhanced connectivity as well. And there's a lot of uh, investment opportunities that uh, I've been talking about. One is uh, the one stock millionaire. We have a particular stock geared towards telecoms and emerging markets. So overall, that whole thing of more and more connectivity, waves of it, and we're at the leading edge in this country with 5G is just, it's an absolute revolution. I, I think it's fascinating what you're saying about how that will change manufacturing as we know it. Yeah, and, and I think that the thing is to, that there are really two uh, aspects to 5G. One is speed, you know, how much you can download a certain amount of data for, which is gonna be dramatically faster with 5G. But the other one is this idea of latency. Um, one idea to think about uh, latency is, you know, when a delivery person comes to, to my house and I work in my home office, they ring the doorbell. Um, there's often like, you know, between all the networks and all the connections that have to go from my doorbell to the internet, to my cell phone provider, to my cell phone where, where I have my doorbell app, it can take up to 10 seconds for me to know the guy's there. And if they're in a hurry, they leave, you know. 
Um, but with 5G, that's going to be reduced to, you know, maybe a second, a second and a half. And so that's the kind of stuff that's going to happen. And when people realize that that is what's available, then they're going to want to buy products that allow that to happen. It may not be the cell phone in the first instance, um, but certainly anything that can compress that, that time lag is, is going to be appealing to people, both in the uh, industrial uh, environment and on the consumer side, I think. Yeah, you know, I saw it just as a, a last thing for me on this, because I, I happen to disagree a bit here regarding 5G. I think as people, regular consumers get a taste of it, the early adopters, millennials, I know my son who's 12, if he could, if, if we let him get 5G service, if we had it around here, he would definitely want it, as long as he didn't have to pay for it, of course. Um, but uh, I saw a, a demo that Verizon did at a Super Bowl two years ago in which they actually blacked out two of the players' helmets. This is like a couple of days before the Super Bowl. Blacked out their helmets, played 5G screens, and one player could actually run a passing route while the other player, quarterback, threw him a pass simply by looking at the video screens. That's how fast the 5G was, basically zero latency. So right. it, that, that part is something that I think, as, as you were just saying, we're only just scratching the surface of it and new waves of entrepreneurs and companies that we're looking at these days are providing those opportunities. Wouldn't you agree? Absolutely. And uh, in fact, I saw an article the other day somewhere that was saying that the real benefit to 5G may not actually come to the cell phone. It'll come to whatever great new um, device uh, 5G enables, just the way 4G enabled the smartphone. 5G is going to enable something we may not even know what it is yet. Uh, and that's why it's so important to, to keep an eye on this industry uh, and see what's bubbling up from the bottom. Absolutely. Well, Ted, uh, I guess we'll uh, we'll wrap it up there. I really appreciate you coming on and talking about uh, 5G and, again, how that will change uh, industri industrial uh, operations and, and manufacturing and all the rest. Thanks, Ted. Always a pleasure. And for all of us here, thank you for joining us here for Saturday Market Insight. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, and we'll have a brand new edition next week. Thanks for watching.